Hello, viewers and everyone and Facebook friends and family watching me. My name is Eric and I am here to clarify something and actually uh, use this opportunity to uh, talk about my story. I'm in a very uh, desperate situation. I need help. Uh, and I cannot just come and appeal to the public to assist me. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm going through a lot. But before I say what puts me into that situation, I need to actually uh, let everyone know what I'm going through and the cause of it. Now, uh, the problem that I'm having is concerning a doctor uh, here in South Af in Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, a Cuban uh, medical doctor working at a hospital called Medico Legal Clinic uh, or Medico Legal Services. They actually offer uh, what do you call it? Uh, autopsy services, uh, those kind of things. They do rape victims. They uh, check people, they diagnose rape and other things. Uh, uh, let's say abuse. That is what they are in, into. So they, they actually do their work and then uh, hand over the rest to the police to actually uh, investigate uh, to find victims. That is what their work is mostly uh, about. Now, um, in I have a, a small family. We are a, a family of five. My wife, myself, and three other children. The last of which is my biological child who was six years old last year. And this incident happened last year, but actually there is a reason why I'm talking about it at this time. So uh, I plead with you. And I know that most people watching me are health professionals uh, or medical professionals, so they can assist in deciding this matter. They can also uh, actually um, advise. Most people watching me are legal pr practitioners and then uh, legal professionals or uh, stakeholders in the health and then the uh, legal industry. And then, of course, the general public who are into psychology and other fields, all of which are related to health, uh, you can also uh, come in, and human rights. So I'm actually appealing to the Human Rights Watch to actually come to my aid in terms of this report that I'm bringing out, in terms of this story that I'm bringing out. The United Nations, the children's organizations worldwide, because this is also affected, it's also concerning my, my child. And then uh, uh, people, uh, anyone at all who will be touched by my story to actually come to my aid to assist. Now, this is how the story goes. Uh, in 2021, that was last year in March, first March, my son, who is six years old, uh, he was given birth to in 26, uh, that's 2015. So uh, in 2018, that was the um, three years, when he was three years old, three years, three and a half years old, he started developing uh, a condition. He had a problem. Uh, he had a problem with the uh, constipation. Sometimes when he goes to the toilet, he sees some blood in the uh, in the stool on the stool, and then also his uh, um, what do you call it? His stool is very hard sometimes because if you flush, it does not even flush. I can testify to that. And then also, uh, when this problem comes, what happens is that it itches and then uh, it, it becomes very reddish. Uh, normally, the affected parts that these symptoms normally comes when uh, the condition comes up is at the back of the knee, uh, at the back of the knee, then uh, in front of the elbow, uh, in front of the elbow, that is this part, 
and then also um, in the anus. It itches, and sometimes when he's walking or when he's sitting down, you see him actually um, itching, you know. So these are the conditions. Uh, these are the symptoms that we normally see when the condition comes up. So we have a doctor that we take him to whenever the condition comes up, and then he actually uh, uh, recommends that we buy, we get some drugs. If it is available, he supplies, we pay for it. If he doesn't have, he writes for us liquid paraffin, um, some other uh, ones which are forgotten their names. And then also he tells us to monitor his diet. He should eat brown bread, not white bread. And then also um, there is another medicine that he gives us when he brings it to soften his stool. And then also we should see to it that he eats a lot of uh, fiber uh, foods. So we actually use to monitor him. So the whole house, we normally tease him and we know his problem that he has constipation and whenever he eats bread, he has a problem. So whenever he's eating bread, we just laugh at him. We say, you are eating bread. Don't let us hear your, your noise when you are in the toilet. So it's something that we normally used to laugh at. Now, uh, he has been with this condition. It comes intermittently. It comes and goes. It comes and goes. But then we, whenever it comes, we take him to see the doctor. Now, what is happening is this. He has been with this condition until, um, let's say, 2021. That was last year. Almost every year, we experience it three times or four times. So last year, what happens is that it came up. The condition came up. We saw it on the 1st of April, Monday, sorry, Monday, the 1st of March. 2021. So we promised him that we will take him to see the doctor on Wednesday. That is, we saw it on Monday. The, when he came back from school, we could see that he's itchy. The redness has started. So we saw. And then the anus, when he's walking, you see that he's itchy. We saw it. So we have to plan and we agree that on Wednesday, when I bring him back from school, his big sister should pick him and then meet with the mother, meet up with the mother in town so that they go to see the doctor. That was the arrangement that we made. Now, on the, the following day, which is the, the, the 2nd of March, 2021, uh, I came back from work in the evening and I was bathing. Uh, I must tell you, it is very important that I talk about this bathing thing because something happens. This whole thing that I'm coming to talk about is around this bath. So what happened was that uh, I came back around 8 o'clock and then I went to the bathroom to have my bath. I actually go into the bathroom with my hot water because I want it extra hot. So I went in with my water and then I was bathing. So whilst in the bathroom already bathing for myself alone, um, my wife knocked and said my little wife, uh, his name is Kwame, so Kwame wants to come to uh, toilet. I said, okay, it's fine. He should just let him come because I am bathing. The bathroom is first and then the uh, toilet is next. So I'm bathing here. He could go in to have uh, to ease himself. But then he should keep the door, the, the bathroom door open. So he did so. And then after this boy has finished... Um, uh, easing himself, knowing that the next day he will go to school. So normally, we normally do most of the preparations down so that the next day we don't have to do much before going to school. So I decided that the little water that was left, I, would, uh, I bathed him with it. So I was not actually even bathing him myself because I'm trying to teach a six-year-old, I'm teaching him how to bath for, uh, on his own. So mostly it has, whenever he's bathing, he baths early, I teach him how to bath on him on his own and then uh, that was what exactly was happening so i was putting the water on him and giving him guidelines and directions as to what to do wash your face do this do that do that and he was following when it was time he squatted i washed his knee with the soap and the, and the, with the sponge i put the, the the soap in the sponge i was actually using um a liquid soap 
yes, a liquid soap uh, is a is a Ghanaian um, locally manufactured soap called Alata Samina. Normally, that that means Alata soap. It is um, very soft. It's in a liquid form. So that was what I was actually using. So uh, I apply it, and then that is all. Not even applying it regular. So I just use it to wash his body. He squatted, and then I put water at his back. He drains down. I ask him to wash his bumps. He washes his bumps. Then uh, that is it. He was done bathing. I called the mother to bring his towel and his uh, slippers because he came without the slippers. So the mother brought them and then actually came for him to prepare him, uh, dress him up for him to go to bed. Now, what happened was because this condition had already come up and there are bruises because he has uh, the redness is there. He has got some kind of, uh, 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 let me say, call it because of the redness. There are some little sores at the affected areas. So when I bath him with the water and then the liquid, the, 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 the soap water entered into those stores, definitely he was a bit uncomfortable. So after the bath, he was uh, his situation became worse so we told him that the mother told me that is the water is the soap water that has entered into the stores actually so uh, i said yes i didn't even know so when i was trying to even uh, wash his legs even at the back of the knee the way he was turning the legs i even forgot that something is even at the back of the, the knee so for me i just bathed and then uh scratched everything so that he would be clean so, well, we promised that, okay, it's just tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to see the doctor. So, uh, just sleep tomorrow. Then, that was it. The next day, he dressed him up, and then I took him to school. In the afternoon, I went to bring him. By 2 o'clock, we were in the house. The school closes at 1.30. And then, um, by the time I fetch, wait for him, fetch him at school, uh, by 2 o'clock, Two yeah, by two o'clock we were at home. Two o'clock getting to two thirty, two forty-five, we were at home. So uh, I went back to my business, and then the sister actually dressed him up, and then they went uh, to meet their mother as agreed. So when they met, uh, they went straight to the doctor's place. By then it was lockdown, so businesses were not running normally. They were closing a little bit earlier than normal. So what happened was when they went into the building where the doctor operates, uh, the building had closed. They were not allowing more people to enter into the building as the building was preparing to close down for business. To business. So now, uh, what happened is because they couldn't uh, get access to see the doctor, they decided to go to the nearest uh, hospital or the nearest clinic. And the nearest clinic at this point is called Hilbro. Hill, Johannesburg Hillbro Community Clinic. That is the nearest. So they decided to go there. So of course they went there and then the security showed them where to pass. They were using one entrance into the, 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 the hospital. He showed them where to pass. They passed there and then they went straight in. There was an opening. They saw people sitting there. They also went to sit. But let me clarify something. At this point where they went to sit, is medical legal services premises it is part of the hospital the same building but their section is different because they do pathology pathological services so this is at the back somewhere and then uh, they know the services that they do so most people are on appointment referrals from police stations because they've gone to police station to lodge complaints and they have um, referred them to come there most also are fresh cases that maybe somebody is in a pool of blood as a result of something, you know, or the, and then the person is uh, brought also in there. Or maybe the person has a referral letter already that go there for a checkup for the doctors to confirm that you have been raped or something. So these are the kind of people who are there. Most of the people have already been there before they know the person. My wife or my family do not know. My wife and the doctor do not know. So what happened was, when this doctor was not available, they decided to walk. So they actually walked from town, that is from Lister Building in Johannesburg, you can Google it, to Johannesburg Hospital, which is about, let's say, one kilometer exactly. So they walked. 
the three of them. Now, they sat down, they said there were no doctors, so around 5.36, I think the doctors were in. And then the, there was one woman, a woman doctor who attended to them, asked, what is the problem of uh, this boy? Then my wife told her that this child is suffering from uh, eczema and constipation. So number one, people watching me, remember that this place is a place for medical legal referrals, appointments, and also visible or uh, let's say uh, uh, physical, uh, what should I put it? Like if somebody, something has actually happened to someone and it falls under uh, their services that they render, which is so fresh, the person could also go there and they will decide whether you should go to police station and come back or how they do their things, I do not know. But their duty is, if someone is there and mentions any condition which is not part of their services, they were supposed to tell the person, no, here, we do not do skin problems here. Go into the general hospital, you are the wrong place. Then they just use the next entrance to enter into the general hospital. Of course, there is a lift from that point just up for you to go into the general hospital. So you could just pass the same uh, there is an access into the the, the, the the main hospital if it is not a case of medical legal. So now, the doctor did not tell them that he is not into skin, she is not doing skin and constipation. She just looked at the child, she forced, she took the child uh, to the bed and on the table somewhere, turned the child, he, he, she ignored all the, the uh, what do you call it? the redness and the itchiness that the child was eating at the various, um, what do you call it, uh, at the various uh, parts of the, the child's skin, physically the outside skin. He put the child on the table, tried to look at the anus of the child because it's itching when he's walking, he's itching, tried to look at the anus of the child. Then he asked the child, do you feel pain when you are walking? Then the child said, no. I only felt pain yesterday after daddy finished bathing me. When this doctor heard about bathing, that was her interest. She did not consider anything on the child. What the mother is saying about constipation or anything, the, 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 the doctor did not listen because she, according to her, she has seen a crack in the anus of the child and then uh, conditions that are there, that are visible, or that are present, or that the mother is saying that could cause that crack, she did not even want to listen to those. So according to her, she is following the bath issue. So she she asked the child, the deep finish bath, he said, yes, my daddy bathed me yesterday. After the deep finish bathing me, I was feeling uh, pain. The deep bathed me with soap. The child knows very well that it's the soap bubbles that entered into his source that was making his situation worse. That's why he made reference to the soap. So they did bath me with soap and the blue hair. Now, by blue hair, what the child was referring to is the sponge. It's a child's language, blue hair. And that blue hair she was he was referring to, here it is. This is my sponge that I used to bath. I haven't changed it since last year. It is still here. It's too long, brought to me from Ghana, so I decided to cut it into two. So here is it. So this is what my child was referring to as blue hair. Blue hair. It's a child's language. He didn't know this is a sponge. Right. So now, what happened was, the doctor, upon just hearing this, left the child. The mother and the sister were at the receptionist, the, the reception area. She went and took, um, she took her paper, her form, wrote the dates and everything, and started writing what she wants. At this point, whatever she was writing here, the mother doesn't know what she was writing. So she actually called the mother and asked the mother about the story of bathing. The child is mentioning the father that the father bathed him yesterday. What 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 happened? Then the mother said, yes, yesterday, this is what happened, narrated the same thing. The father was bathing, so I asked permission, and the child only went 
to, to, to toilet and after that his father bathroom. His own father, his biological father. So what point are you making? He said the child has been penetrated. He said, what? What are you talking about? Do you know the father of the child? Do you know who he is? He's a professional like you. So don't even say what you are saying. Don't even say this. He said, no, 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 no. Then she made a general statement, sentimental, something personal that she has against South African men. She then said that, uh, South Africans actually, she said that this is what you do. When your husbands molest and abuse their children sexually, you come here to come and cover up for them. So that means whatever my wife is saying is covering up for me, the father. All right. So from the beginning, she did not even listen to all the things we are talking about, the allergies, the itchiness of the skin, the constipation. She didn't take any of this into consideration. She was skewing and narrowing this whole thing to the services that she offers, what she does, so that it will, she will make a case. And that is exactly what she's doing now. So she wrote down that from according to the mother, yesterday at night at 8 o'clock, the father took the child into the bathroom to give him a bath. And he put a big soap and big hair, a, a big soap inside the anus. That is what the doctor wrote. This is what the doctor wrote. All right. Now, a big soap. The child didn't say big soap. The child said, my daddy bathed me with soap. But listen carefully. Because this doctor wants to do something, she is mischievous. She wants to do something, and she wants her claim to be accepted or to make her case vivid. That is what, why she wrote big soap. I don't know how big the soap is that she was referring to. And nobody told her about which soap and the size of soap at all. She is the one who wrote this herself. She wrote this and then she wrote a lot more of uh, other things. And then she also wrote that, she finally wrote that, to, uh, that was yesterday, this is what happened. But when she went to school and came back that particular day, she, he then, the child then disclosed to the family that, I don't know which family he disclosed to which member of the family is disclosed to because we are all here. Nobody knows who the child disclosed to. The child has not said anything, but this doctor wrote here that the child after school disclosed to the family that she that he is feeling pain from the soap that the he put in his anus yesterday. Look at this. So it's looking like we are bringing the child or they, they brought the child to the clinic if you are reading this report, the impression you get is that they are bringing this child into the clinic because of what happened, because his daddy did something to him yesterday, and then today the child has actually uh, uh, said or confessed or disclosed to the rest of the family. That is why they have decided to take him and bring him into the hospital. It's not like there is a, a, a condition or it's not like the child is sick or anything. That's the way... So, She's trying to let this report she's writing sound as if something just happened yesterday. And then today the child is talking and said that this is what happened to me yesterday. It is like, according to the doctor, what he's writing here, that the child has mentioned me that I have penetrated him. All right. Meanwhile, the child never said this to the doctor. Nowhere did the doctor, the child said this. Okay, so this is at the doctor's place. The doctor continued to write other things. She, she, she wrote that the child is still bleeding, the canal line is still bleeding, and immobility. So it means the child is immobile. That means the child that walked, who had been to school and taken part in all school activities, that teachers at school did not even call us to tell us that your child is immobile, your child is inactive, so please come for him or come. The, nothing like that happened. The same child that had walked from town to the hospital, the same child that was not on an ambulance, the same child that was not in a wheelchair, the same child that was not carried into the hospital. This is what doctor is saying now, that the child is immobile. So perhaps the child became immobile or the child got paralyzed just in front of, of him or when he put him on the table. 
Now, at this point, the mother is also there, the sister is also there. If the child was still bleeding, according to you, what you have written here, why didn't you tell the mother, come and see? Because at this point, it's like whatever the mother is saying you are against. So, even if the mother was not supposed to see, you were supposed, as a matter of challenge, to let the mother, come, come and see. Can you see that your child is bleeding? The doctor didn't do anything like this. So, this still bleeding and immobile immobility, she wrote it here, whereas my wife doesn't know what she was writing. She was actually not right in front of them, not even where the child is standing. So that you will say, he's writing this from what he, she, he's seeing, or maybe what the mother is saying and she's writing down, or he's asking the child something and writing down. She actually went somewhere, wrote all the things that she will write, and come back. When she came back, he said, call the police for this mama. She said, call police for what? No, 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 no. Don't talk. This is a state issue. They must call the police. The police must do their work. By then, she has gone there at the back there to write this. She came back. Remember, this account I'm giving you, I wasn't there at the hospital. This account I'm giving you is the account my wife gave me of what transpired in the hospital because I wasn't there. I was at home with my other son. All right. So, she wrote this, and then already when the nurses were not calling the police because they were surprised. Because looking at this boy who came here, this nothing has happened to this boy. So it's like they were surprised. They didn't call the police. So she went somewhere. She came again. She was saying, you guys, you still didn't call the police. This mama is still here. Then she herself went to take a phone, call the police, and the police came. The police station is actually Hebrew police station. is not far from the hospital. So the police came. When the police came, she handed a copy of this that she has written to the police. So the police could see these serious things that she has written here. But even the police won't ask questions. Because, of course, if this report is given to you, and you read what this doctor has written here, and then you say, I want to see the victim, and they show you the victim, you will pause. You will ask a question. You say, ah, what you have written here, is it referring to this person? This person sitting down, this person standing here playing a video game on the sister's phone. <laughs> it, is, it is pathetic. And then it is hilarious at the same time. Yes. So now, um, this is what this doctor did. Um, without taking any consideration of the, the symptoms that was on the child, what could cause a crack even if she had seen a crack on the child? He skewed the whole thing, narrowed the whole thing to a penetration that the child has been penetrated by the father. He wrote that in this. Called police, handed over this to them. So the police also came. They saw the seriousness of what they have written, but what he has written, but they did not even ask questions. They said, let's go. They went to the police station. According to Hebrew police, this is not under their jurisdiction because of where we stay. So we need to go to a place called GP police station. So we went to GP police station, and then at GP police station, they have to make a statement, possibly. So my wife made a statement that yesterday, this child's father bathed him. And then we decided to take him to, and then he's, he's sick. He has a condition, uh, constipation and then eczema also. So what happened is that we decided to take the child to the hospital. When we took him to the hospital, that this is what the doctor is saying. That's my wife's statement. My wife's statement, I have read it. I have gone to the police station to actually read my wife's statement because I wanted to see what statement my wife gave. All right. So she wrote this, and then my child has to make a statement or they have to take a statement from my child. What will the child say? My child say, yesterday, they did bath me with soap and the blue hair. So police wrote down soap and blue hair. They wrote like that. So remember, from the doctor's office, from the doctor's office, the child is immobile. The child is still bleeding. But from the doctor's office, from the, from the hospital to the clinic, from the hospital, sorry, to the police station, they did, the police didn't see bleeding on their own account to write down physically on the child. There was no bleeding. The police didn't see bleeding. All right. As for crack, 
police are not into that, so they may not see. But visible or physical features that they could see, they did not see blood on the child. They did not also see immobility because the child was walking. So between the doctor's uh, office, that is between the hospital and the police station, the child that is immobile is now mobile. Just look at and listen carefully and, and put your sense and analyze what I'm saying. At this same time also, big soap has changed to be soap. And big hair has changed to be, um, what do you call it, blue hair. Just watch it. Police has written the same statement, blue hair, which is this, they were, the child was referring to, the blue sponge. So from the, between the doctor's office, that is between the hospital and the police station, the big hair that the doctor wrote big, the big has changed to be blue at the police station. Are you noticing something? And also, the child, that the doctor that wrote big soap, now the big soap is soap. They did bath me with soap and the blue hair. So it's no more big soap, it is soap. But these words, big, in front of the soap, and big, in front of the hair, someone is trying to portray something. But of course, hair can never be big. So I don't know. But she put the big there. So you can analyze. Instead of the child blue, blue. So this shows you clearly what is happening here. What the doctor is trying to do, her intentions. All right. So from police station, after making the statement, it was so quick. But then the police captain saw this statement, this uh, report the doctor wrote. Look at it and said, ah, what? No, there's a problem here. She saw that what the mother and the child have written down here and what is here, they do not match. So he wanted to call the hospital to ask the doctor, what is going on? When she called, my wife was sitting a bit closer to the, the, the telephone. She heard from the other side, the other end, the person saying, the doctor saying, confirmed, confirmed. Confirmed means that if I have written there that the father has done this, it is confirmed he has done it. Do your work. That is it. So whether she was doing this for promotion, it was a mistake, she was drunk, or uh, she was bribed, or she knows me somewhere, which I don't know, and she planned to do this to me, I cannot tell. Police came to my house. So at this time, it's a state issue. So my wife cannot say she will not bring police to where I, I stay. So of course, she has to bring them. And even if my wife should have told me that this is what is happening, I would have taken my car and drive straight to the police station or even the clinic. I wasn't informed. Nobody told me anything. And my wife also was thinking that this will not lead, will lead nowhere because the child is here. Nothing has happened. That was what she was thinking. They came to my house. My wife stood. I heard a noise at the gate. So I thought my family are here finally. It was late, very late, because I know they've gone to the hospital and I know that they couldn't make it and it's late. So me, I was waiting for them to call me and say, come and fetch us. So once they have not called me, I know they are safe where they are. All right. So I slept. I tried to sleep. When I heard the noise, uh, I knew my people were here. But then the sound that I was hearing was a little bit unfamiliar. Uh, the noise of shoes, you know, police shoes, group, 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 that kind of noise, you know. Uh, male voices, no. So I was halfway awake. Before I realized, I was being beaten behind me. By someone, wake up, wake up, wake up, you rapist. How can you rape your own son? I said, Jesus, me rape my own son, rape which son? Because my son, I brought my son from school, they said, this one is with me here. So what is, what is happening? What is going on? At that point, I started thinking. So I turned and asked my wife, that upon all that I've done for you, taking care of your two children who were young, a girl and a boy, until we gave birth to our own child. Is, there, is it how you, you have decided to pay me? But at the same time, I asked that question. But at the same time, we are not fighting. My wife and I do not have a problem. We are not fighting. That she could do something like that against me. I know her. So 
What is the meaning of this actually? I don't know. Well, don't worry, man. Get to the police station. When you get there, you can talk. They will ask you. You can talk. So don't worry. Don't stress yourself. That was what I thought. When I got to the police station, they handcuffed me behind. They beat me, actually. At the police station, I saw my son. I was a bit relieved and happy because I saw my son was in a good state. So if this is the one they were referring to, then I know that even physically by looking at this child, everybody will see that there's something. So they can let me go. Because at that time, I don't know what doctor has said, what has transpired. I have not heard anything. So I don't know what is actually happening. I'm confused, actually. So I just want to get to the police station and see what is happening. So I go to the police station there. Before I am hearing that this is what you did. This is what the doctor has said. It's the doctor that has said this. But if it is the doctor that has said this, my child could talk. How could the doctor say my child has a headache? When my child says that I have a toothache, can the doctor force and say, you, you have a toothache, uh, you have a headache. Why the child himself and the mother the mother that brought the child, the child did not come to the hospital on his own. The child is a minor, but he could talk. The child did not say that somebody has, excuse me. The child did not say that somebody has done something to him. His father has done something to him. Now it's the doctor who is saying. So it means the doctor is actually forcing a condition on my child. That the child is being penetrated. While the child has not said he has been penetrated by anyone. All right, so that is it. When I got to the uh, uh, police station, they took my swab. And then, of course, remember that they did the same thing to the child at the police station, uh, at the hospital. They took his samples, uh, of, uh, samples of his semen and all those things. Uh, uh, sorry, I say semen. They took uh, samples of his, uh, uh, that, th that affected area, the anus, things that for DNA. So they took th those samples. So now that the doctor says that it is his father that has penetrated him, of course, once he, he, he has done the work of the forensic police at the state, he has concluded everything. Doctors can identify that somebody has been raped, yes, but the doctor cannot tell who raped and, and which object was used to rape a person, whether it was a pen, a pencil, a stick, or whatever. I don't know how the doctor could do that when the person has not spoken and said I'm involved in anal sex or I have put a foreign material even myself or my friend in my anus or anything. The child has not said anything like that. There might be several causes of by which somebody can have a crack in the anus. As a doctor, this doctor calls herself a senior doctor, Dr. Madeline, Madeline Santana, who calls herself a senior doctor does not know the factors or conditions under which a person can have a crack on the anal canal. The doctor doesn't know that. The only thing the doctor knows is that a person can only have a crack in the anal canal when there is penetration. That is what she knows. And, and, and this is not true. And it can never be true anyway. Otherwise, she should go back to school or she should go and study well. I am not into medicals. I'm not a medical profession. But I can give you conditions under which a person can have a crack in the anal, on the anal canal. So this doctor neglected all these things and the visible signs that were there to even tell you one of the key is constipation. And then the child also suffers to go to the toilet when he goes to the toilet, he strains himself. So of course, there can be a crack. You, you, you neglected all this physical evidence that was on the child and you were saying this to make your case for so that you get your promotion or you get paid or what, I don't know. Anyway, I am not going to judge. I'm saying it the way it is so that the general public will judge. This is actually what happened. I was arrested the next day, which was 4th of March. This thing happened on the 10th. This report was written on the 10th. This uh, fake report was on the 10th. But remember also that little did the doctor know that all these things that she was writing here, immobility, um, the child is still bleeding. Uh, the father took the child into the bathroom to give him a bath, which is not the case. Big soap, big, uh, big hair. She didn't know that all these things that she was writing could later expose her. 
she did not know that. She did not also know that trying to say that there is penetration on the child, which uh, th there is a crack on the uh, anus of the child, and that it is that crack is only caused by a penetration who expose her that she does not know her job, she does not know her work, she does not know much about her work. She didn't know that this will expose her. So she wrote these things down. Now, these are the things that are exposing her. All right. Now, um, I did not know what was written here. I was arrested on the 3rd. The next day was 4th of March. I spent the whole day in prison, in police custody. The next day, which is 5th of March, I was actually taken to court. And then I have to pay, we have to pay some money. My brother, who is outside helping, uh, I can put his name, Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin actually ran, ran around. We managed to, to get 10,000 runs. The, 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 the lawyer was demanding 15,000 runs before he appears in the court. We managed to get 10,000 runs. We paid. He received the money, but was waiting for the balance of 5,000 before he, made, he makes an appearance. Because the 5,000 was not ready, he refused to actually make that appearance. He was in the court. I even gave him my phone to hold for me. He did not actually uh, come into the courtroom. So what happened is I have no lawyer for the first time. Will I have a, 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 would I like to take a public, uh, uh, what do you call it, a government lawyer, a state lawyer? I said no. So they made me aware that this is the highest crime, one of the highest crimes against the state, which is a, um, a, a rape, rape of a minor, not just rape, rape of a minor. So if I'm guilty of this offense, I'm going in for 25 years if I've offended before. If I'm a first-time offender, I'm going for 12 years if I'm found guilty. Do I understand? I said yes. I agreed to something that I do not know because at that point, I can't talk. I'm in a box. Nobody's asking me anything. It is not trial that somebody is asking me a question that I could talk or explain anything. So, automatically, no lawyer for now. I have to be taken to custody, a uh, prison custody, and reappear on another day. Prison custody, prison, and you are talking about me all my life. I have not even been to police cells. I am going to prison today. <laughs> it was like it was like a joke. It was like I did not hear it, but I heard it. I heard it, and already the the, the discomfort that I have had in the police cells for those for for the, for, 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 the, for the two days and the cages and the way i was transported from the police cells there to the court i saw that these people they were not here to joke with me so my case is rape of a minor eric somwa versus the state of south africa that is the big case this doctor has gone to pick from nowhere and put in my neck what is this people what is this at that moment, I have become a prisoner. Going to prison, coming back to court, going to prison, coming back to court. Now, what happened? How did I get this report and got to know all the lies that are here? The whole family got to know all the lies this doctor wrote here. How did I get to know about it? I don't want the video to be too long, so I won't talk about it. I am in prison now, suffering. So in your mind, up to where I've told you up to, this is the problem the doctor has created for me. I have been arrested. My business has come to a halt. Whatever business I have to contract, I have to do with somebody. I'm a mathematician. I write mathematics articles. I go to University of Johannesburg to tutor people privately. That is how I make my income. Remember that at that point, it's out. No business, no contract. Nobody could get to me. It is off. Remember also that when I was arrested on the 3rd, I was released on the, on the 15th of June. And that release on the 15th of June is not because I've been sentenced for four months. No. Or I've been sentenced for three months and some days. No, that is not the case. I would have spent seven years, four years going to court, coming back, just like other people are doing, and they have not yet sentenced them on the same rape charges. But mine was in june it was so quick i may say four months but the four months is like 
years because of the distraction, because of the things that happened, I lost everything. So remember that from today that I've just told you that I have become a prisoner. That is it. I'm in prison. Whatever is happening, I don't know. My business, whatever, has come to an end. I am in prison. Now I will let you know in the next video, because I don't want this video to be too long, in the next video, how I got this report, how we got to know all the things that the doctor wrote here. I'll give you all the other reports that came after this doctor's report. There are three other reports over here and what they reveal was happening to the child whilst I was in prison. You will get to know and judge. But for now, I'm appealing Although you have not heard up to the end. When this thing happened to me, I have lost all my business. I have lost all my stock. The side business that I was doing, I've lost my business contacts, uh, my, my contracts. The side business that I was doing, I sell car parts. Uh, cars that I've bought to actually split them for parts. Those, those that I've bought to actually uh, repair them, to sell all of them, I have lost them because where I kept them, the owner wanted the space to actually renovate his building. So whilst I was in prison, I had the news. They took everything to the scrapyard. So when I came back from prison, I came with sickness. As I'm sitting here, I'm sick. And all indications point out that it's a kidney issue. It's a kidney uh, problem. The uh, uh, frequency of urination, urinating of blood and other things. The moment I came back from prison, I started seeing these symptoms. I can't stand. I'm feeling dizzy. That is why the free mathematics tutorial that I used to do on Facebook, I have actually put it on a hold for some time. I've paused it because I don't have the strength to do those videos. Number one, the family, we are suffering because of this issue. We lost the place we were staying before because we were staying in a church compound, a school premises, like a school compound that was given to us. With a good rent, we were staying there. When this thing happened, parents, uh, the owners were afraid that when parents hear that somebody has been raped on this premises, they will take their children out of the school. So quickly, the owners fought with my wife and chased the family to get out of the house because of that. And then also, the owner of the house was a is a foreigner also from Kenya, and she know he knows me very well. My child attended that church, graduated from that church, that same church. So knowing me and knowing that I didn't do this, he thought my wife has a hand in this. So it's part of the anger for which he drove them out of the house. So now, because of that, when we were staying and we we're paying 3,500 rents, which we could afford, we are now forced to enter somebody's house where we could put our things and stay. We are paying 7,000 rands every month. The rent has doubled. That is 50% added to it. It's not easy for us. Now, as I speak, the month of this June, the rent is unpaid. We've tried everything. We couldn't raise the money. We have already borrowed money with interest trying to pay the previous rents and be able to feed the family. It's not easy. Now to the point that last month it was worse. We started sleeping on empty stomachs, including the child. The child started going to school on empty stomach. I can no longer take my child into a car, my own car and take him to school. I've sold all my property to pay lawyers. The first lawyer I took neglected me in the prison. I have to make an arrangement to take another prison. I've sold all my properties, my laptop, my app, almost everything that is valuable. My wife does not currently hold a phone. She has pawned her phone and finally went to take some small money just to sell the phone off. She does not have a phone. So we are in a very desperate condition situation as I speak now in terms of feeding, in terms of rent, in terms of psychological. Now this child that they wrote that the child has been penetrated by his own father, they were not able to provide any form of psychological support to her. No social worker came to visit the child to see how the child is faring. If what they were saying is true, none, nobody till today. No psychological help. The trauma this child has been through, the wrong medication that the doctor supplied that day. The doctor gave this child Aluvia, 100 mg, which is an HIV medication that the mother should give to the child. He gave to the child not knowing. And I asked there, what medication did the child get from this doctor anyway? 
Before he showed me, I said, no, don't give that alluvia to the child. There are side effects. It is an HIV medication. Don't give it. And my wife stopped. It is here. I will show it the next time that I'm coming to show you all the evidence for um, this um, false report that this doctor wrote. So we are suffering. I want whoever is listening to this video to come to our aid because there are children involved. There's a little child of seven years old. My child just turned seven in January this year. So please, we are appealing. I'm begging you. I'm begging my friends, people who know me, people who do not know me. This is the situation in which this doctor has put me. He has taken my livelihood. He has taken the livelihood and happiness of my child. My child is struggling. My child is suffering now. A very brilliant child. But this child, now, this child is, is not stable. There are, there are problems, actually. So I'm appealing to the general public. Whoever can assist, should assist us. My contact number here in South Africa is 071-849-2424. I'm considering leaving to Ghana, relocating to Ghana, if I get any assistance, and then start my life over there. I have my credentials, I have my qualifications. I could start something back home in my country. Then I'll be able to extend some help to my child over here. So if anybody has anything to help me with, even while in Ghana, in terms of accommodation, where I'll stay before I start all over, because I've spent 10 years in South Africa. I built my life. I've tried to, to make roots, actually to stand, before this doctor has actually decided to ruin my life this way. I've also left a son in Ghana who has just finished WASI, and he needs to rewrite money for me to make this child, to assist my child to rewrite. Look at the situation in which I'm in now. It's overwhelming. This is difficult. So if anybody would want to assist me, my number is 071-849-2424. You could also see it on the screen. You could also come to my page. If you go to Facebook, Eric Sumwa, you will see mathematics videos and mathematics tutorials. Then you know it's me, it's the right Eric Sumwa. You can actually chat with me on, um, what do you call it, on Messenger, and know that it's me, and then you could uh, take my number and offer me any kind of assistance that you could. I'm thanking uh, all of you who have listened to me. I'm pleading with the Minister of Health, uh, South Africa, the minister in charge of health department of Houghton, uh, and then also all lawyers, law firms, to actually come to my aid so that I could bring an action. Now I went to the hospital to lay an official complaint. The hospital has heard the complaint. They have not re re uh, get, got back to us. They have refused to talk. The doctor was part of the people who sat in the meeting to listen to the complaint. I recognize her. They have not said anything till today to us. That was on the 12th. We made the complaint on the 12th of April this year, 2022. Till now, nobody has got back to us. Somebody sent me an email. I tried to make a, to make a follow-up and the person has told me at the other side that if they are saying I've done something and I've not done, I should go to court. Just like that. Is that right? So I'm pleading to all law firms. I'm pleading to the human rights watch, human rights organizations who are watching this video, who are listening, to come to my aid and advise and do something about this issue. And try to probe this doctor to see if she has the right qualifications. And also, if she did not do the right thing, she has to do the right thing. And the hospital that the doctor works for to actually come to our aid to actually solve this problem, the mess that they have created, and reinstate us in the position we were before this thing happened. I'm thanking all of you, and I know you will not turn your backs on us. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. May God bless you all.